Hey gang, this is Kirk from Memento. Are you overburdening your MongoDB database with unnecessary tasks? Perhaps you find yourself tallying data and storing them in separate collections or doing other simple tasks that might be best left to a tool dedicated to those things. Your database is a relatively expensive but critical piece of your overall architecture. Using its power wisely is crucial when overall cost is a concern. And when isn't it a concern? If this resonates with you at all, it may be the right time to introduce Memento Cache into your architecture. It's important to know that Memento Cache isn't meant to serve as a substitute for your traditional database most times, whether it's MongoDB or other databases. Rather, envision it as a power boosting supplement for your tech stack enhancing performance. Memento Cache is a highly optimized and cost efficient store for ephemeral data, and its standout features are fourfold. One, high scale performance and availability. Two, automatic management, three, secure by default, and four, flexible data types you know and love. Let's quit talking hypotheticals and jump into some code to look at implementing a read aside cache with Memento Cache and MongoDB in TypeScript. Okay, so here we are in the getClientFunctions.ts file. We have two imports, one from the Go Memento SDK and then the other one from the AWS SDK for the Client Secret Manager. We're doing this because we need to get a Memento auth token. And right now I am storing that Memento auth token encrypted inside of AWS Secrets Manager. This function here is what will actually get that token. I'm passing it the name of the secret uh, in the region. I hard coded that just for now, just for this test. It's US West 2. Then I just go ahead and get the client connection. Uh, and then I'm going to send the information that I'm looking for right here and then return that to the calling function. Now, the calling function is this one right here, which is actually going to be getting the cache client for Memento. I'm passing into this function is a TTL with a default value of 600 seconds, then the token string of Memento auth token, and then I'm returning a cache client here. I'm going to call the get token function above and pass in the token name that I wanted to go get. Uh, I bring in that back and pass it into the, the to create a new cache client object with my configuration. I provide the credentials right here and with the from string method and then the TTL value, which is either the default or whatever is passed in. And that is going to be returned to that calling function. Now I've broken this out because this makes it so that I can reuse the cache client for multiple calls. And you'll see that here a little bit later. So here we are in our read aside memento mongo.ts where we have our imports of the memento client as well as the mongo client. We create our interfaces here that we're going to use. We start our class with the read aside wrapper. And we're bringing in the cache client, because again, we want to reuse that cache client as many times as possible, as well as the cache name that we're going to be connecting to. We have our constructor here for the class. We're immediately getting into our get item function, where we're taking in the, the what key to get, and that's it. We're trying to keep it really simple here. We're going to make sure that we have the client here. Here we're actually doing the get call to Memento Cache to check to see if the item is there and get it if it is. We're going to check to see if we got a cache hit. A cache hit means that we actually have the item in the cache and we brought the value back. And we don't want to continue on. There's nothing more to do. We have the item. We're going to return it to the calling function and continue on. But if not, then we can actually look and see if we have a cache miss or a cache error. You don't have to break these out. You can if you want to. Uh, I do because I want to make sure I have a different message just because I like that kind of information. In all actuality, what we're doing here if we don't get a cache hit, we need to go into MongoDB. That's really what it comes down to. So the other stuff is just information purposes. You could streamline this if you really wanted to. So here we're gonna call the MongoDB handler, which is down here and we'll get to in a moment uh, with the bring back the value there. And then if we did find it in the MongoDB database, we're gonna try and set it in the Memento cache right here. Again, we're gonna be doing our error handling in, in this case, since it's a set operation, it's either a success or it's an error. And then we're going to return based off of that. So let's look at the MongoDB handler. This one is super simple. I'm looking at the local instance of MongoDB. We're going to create the Mongo client with the URI. And then we're going to do what we have a try and final block. We're going to connect to the DB. 
We're going to be creating our query here of the item to get that we passed in. And then we're just going to do a find one and return if it, if it comes back. And finally, we're going to actually close the MongoDB connection at this point. So let's actually look at the, the jest file that we're going to use to test it. We're bringing in the two files that we need that we created, the one for the get client functions, as well as for the Memento and Mongo read aside piece. We're going to do our describe, start the jest, and then we're going to actually call the client function right here. We're passing in a TTL of 10,800, which is three hours. And then we're going to instantiate the read aside wrapper. We're passing in this client that we created in this line up here. Uh, we're going to pass in the database that we're doing right here for the test, which is movies. And then we actually call that get item class and we're going to pass in the movie Conan the Barbarian. And we're, then we're going to do just do a console.log and, and stringify the, the return value of that. So let's actually look at this and we're going to run a test here real fast. And you can see here that it created creating the, the memento cache. We're looking for Conan the Barbarian. Oh, and we got a cache hit. That means it was already in the memento cache. And it brings back this JSON document right here. So let's actually do a different one. We're going to do Conan the Librarian, and we're going to run the test with that. That one I know does not exist inside here. So here's Conan the Librarian. That's the one that we're, we're looking for. We got a cache miss, so it was not in the cache. We're trying to get it from MongoDB and it comes back with null. So it's not even in the MongoDB database. So it's not going to be there and it's not going to be written into the Memento cache. With this, if this was something that did go in the librarian, did exist inside of the MongoDB database, uh, our function would take that back and actually stick it into the Memento cache for later purposes. Okay, that's all here, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you heard, Make sure you see you like, share, and subscribe.